My dad's retiring. He's selling the garage. I'm out of a job. Can you help me think of something to stick in this get well card to my mum? Oh, is she poorly? Yeah, she's in hospital dying. <laughs> what? OK, I'll do it, Gaz. I'll buy the garage. Oh. <laughs> mum told me I'm adopted. Like an orphan. Well, not like an orphan, because they're not necessarily adopted. Rather like an adoptee! <laughs> The bartender, give me a drink. I want a cold, wet glass with bubbles in it. And that doesn't mean I can handle anything stronger now. Just think how we do I. Janet, I don't want to tell you how to raise your child, but what the hell is that? <laughs> it's milk. His last bottle broke and we couldn't afford a new one. Well, that's Gaz's dream come true, that. Big tit full of beer. <laughs> Look, if you can't afford baby bottles, Johnny will have to get a job. Yeah, well, well, he's tried, but there aren't any jobs available in this field. I mean, that bloody field. <laughs> anyway, he doesn't need to find a job now because I have got a job. Ooh. Earn pound, pound, pounds working from home. You can earn up to six hundred pounds per week. <laughs> Making squeaky owls for kids. <laughs> you want to be careful with these things. They try and rip you off. They're only toys, Donna. <laughs> Not the elves, the people who run it. <laughs> well. You saw the flyer, up to £600. Yeah, but up to doesn't mean anything. It just means no more than £600. Well, no, well, that'd be greedy. <laughs> and I'd probably have to sign off. Mm. <laughs> Why don't you get a proper job? Hey, I'm getting promoted. Remember I told you about my old boss? I was always throwing sickies, going home early. I didn't think he'd last much longer. Well, sure enough. Is that the... No, he's dead. <gasps> <laughs> Congratulations! Thank you. Yay! I just noticed in the toilets. Was it my phone number on the cubicle walls? <clears throat> no, it was a... What? <laughs> I own the galleries now, Johnny. It's my business, my responsibility. You know, I've got to put that phone number where people will see it. OK. <laughs> uh, if you want to, your words, advertise your business in the gents, well, that's fine by me. <laughs> well, thank you. And the big picture of a cock? That's <laughs> uh, my corporate logo. <laughs> Are on the garage now. Well, technically, but it's me that runs the place. You know, it's me that works flat out 24-7, never resting for a moment. Same again, lads? I. <laughs> no, no, what I noticed in the toilets was a complete lack of baby changing facilities. <laughs> yeah, you're right there. Eh? Right. Is it too much to ask? They can afford soap, they can afford a, a hand dryer, they can afford the old fella who squirts you with smelly stuff on the way out. <laughs> I don't think he works here, though. <laughs> So why not a simple table for changing a baby? It made the job very difficult. I'm just a concerned father wanting the best for my child. Oh, yeah, Johnny, yeah. Where is the baby? <laughs> You're such a role model, Donna. Look at you, happy, full of enthusiasm, reveling in a man's death. Oh, stop it, I'll blush. <laughs> So dynamic. I mean, buying the garage with gas, getting promoted. You know, I really admire you for that. Well, I really admire you for... <laughs> you know, for so many things. <laughs> like, that staircase is brilliant. <laughs> Louise, hi. Or is it goodbye? For I shall soon be leaving this town to spend some catch-up time with my birth parents. Either skiing in Aspen or a month in the villa in Tuscany. You should drop in if you're near. Oh, wow, Lou, you've changed your tune. So where do your birth parents live? Well, I don't know yet exactly. <laughs> so how did you find them? Well, I haven't so much as found them. Right, so there isn't a villa in Tuscany. There are many villas in Tuscany. <laughs> Look, Lou, I don't think you should get your hopes up too high. 
Maybe your parents were just normal people who couldn't look after a baby. No parents of mine could be normal people. That's a fair point. Imagine Nelson Mandela had a baby with Princess Diana. There's no way they'd be allowed to bring that child up as their own. Still, you might not be their daughter. Or Mother Teresa in St. Bob Geldof. That would explain my spirituality. Or Keith Harrison Orville. That would explain your voice. <laughs> Find out who my real parents are, and when I'm flying above you in my private hovercraft, you might wish you hadn't been so cruel. I think there's some disappointment on the horizon. <sighs> yeah, poor Louise. Actually, meant for her parents. Must have been the exhaust fumes. I was nearly poisoned. <laughs> well, thank God you came out. I might have never woken up. No, uh, especially not with the blanket over you and <laughs> the pillow under your head. No. And now that's what I call lullabies, volume six. <laughs> right. I'm entitled to a break. A break from what? You haven't done any work in days. I have. Yeah, I had an idea for rebranding the business. Right? Instead of Wilkinson Motors. The gas station. Hey! I own the garage gas. I didn't pay £80,000 so you can treat this place like a hotel. Oh, that reminds me. I didn't get my copy of the Telegraph this morning. You don't read the Telegraph. Yeah, I get it for the trenchant political analysis of Boris Johnson. She's fit. <laughs> what? Anyway, you got your own job to think about. Your promotion. Well, I didn't get bloody promoted, did I? What? Oh, what, did you go in there shouting and demanding it? Uh, no. I chose a quiet moment when no one was busy and I simply asked my boss if there was any chance of me having a dead man's job. And? Turns out it wasn't so much a quiet moment as a minute's silence. Oh. But it's not what I did that matters. It's what I am, a woman, and there's a glass ceiling at that place. Is there? <laughs> yes. And the only people who get to work above the glass ceiling are men. Right. See, if that was me, I'd want women up there. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul. Hi, Ho. <laughs> Have you earned pound, pound, pounds yet? Nearly. Well, let's see. <laughs> what do you think? That's lovely, Janet. It's really adorable. <laughs> it's just the sort of thing that kids will get it out of the house now. What are you talking about? It's evil. <laughs> it reminds me of that thing from Child's Play. Michael Aspel? Yes. <laughs> Johnny, there's no point in covering his ears. Well, I think there is. There isn't. That one can still hear you. <laughs> <laughs> How many of these dwarves are there? Seven. Like that film, Seven. <laughs> but we need to make at least a hundred if I'm to earn pounds, pounds, pounds. Come on, you can help if you like. No chance. I'm not touching them. Uh, Johnny, I'm trying to do something for the family here. I'm trying to be a good mom. <laughs> well, me too. I'm campaigning to introduce baby changing facilities in the pub toilets. I'm thinking of that baby all the time. Where is the baby? <laughs> you had him when you went out. Forget about the glass ceiling. The ceiling isn't relevant. Well, maybe not to you, but ceilings are very important in business. <laughs> Fight your overheads. Fine, but that's not the point I'm making. No, the point is, you didn't get promoted because you're a woman. Yes. Well, that's just sexism, plain and simple. Yes, it is. You're a better rep than anyone in that place, man or woman. I am. It's not like you have to drive a big van or anything, is it? Well, I would, actually. I get me on transit, man. Oh. Yeah, but it's still sexist, though, isn't it, Gaz? <laughs> Gaz, isn't it? No! You can't drive a transit van, you just can't! Don't care whether it is the 20th century or not. 
It's not. <laughs> a white van should be driven by a man. Hence the expression, women can't drive. <laughs> Why don't you just go back to sleep, guys? I, 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 I can't believe you just said that. That's so sexist. You, you're a goddamn misogynist excuse for a modern man. And I, for one, am not... <laughs> That's actually quite impressive. <laughs> Definitely getting more attractive. <laughs> I could almost kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, you wouldn't believe. I didn't realise you had family round. <laughs> Louise, this is work. I made them. Oh, I always thought such things were made by child labourers in the Far East. Yeah, but I'm cheaper. <laughs> Have you got them? My parents. What, in that little envelope? <laughs> Sorry. That was quick. Is it from the adoption agency? No, it's from her. The imposter who claims to have brought me up. Louise. The woman who brought you up is still your mum. I know, but she's in hospital and it's so boring. <laughs> I don't want this random stranger leeching off my valuable time. Louise, pass me some water. Louise, stop stealing me Lucas aid. <laughs> Louise, I just saw Jesus. <laughs> but Luke, just because you've got different blood, that doesn't change anything. I know. And of course, I still call her mum. Good. I just use inverted commas when I say it. So what's in the envelope? It's a letter from my real mother, given to my mum when I was born. What's it say? That's the problem. I know it sounds silly, but I... I just can't open it. I want you to open it for me, Janet. Oh, no. I'm so touched. It'd be an honour. This is a big moment for you. I'm not surprised you can't do it. Oh, it's quite tough, actually. <laughs> I suppose it was sealed a long time ago. See what I mean? It's impossible. I was trying for hours. <laughs> Louise, I thought you asked me to open it because you were scared of what it might say. No, I asked you because you've got beefy arms. <laughs> Look, Lou, I've got elves to make. I can't sit here all day tugging at your flaps. <laughs> right! For that, you're banned from the villa. <laughs> Kelly, I wish to submit a petition. We, the undersigned, demand that the pub sticks more baby change facilities in the men's bogs than that. Go on, it will be ace, love Johnny. <laughs> no chance. If we took any notice of petitions, that corpse would have been removed months ago. Look, three pages of signatures, huh? Mm, amazing, considering how quiet it's been. Well, sometimes you don't notice people coming and going. Delia Smith, hmm. Orson Welles, <laughs> Sting. Well, not the Sting, obviously. Look, Johnny, I'll show it to the brewery, but it won't change anything. One man can't make any difference in this crazy world. Mm, you see that you do. <laughs> right, pal. Right, guys. How's life working for yourself? You have done no work at all today. Nothing. Customers are leaving, the business is going down the toilet. But do I listen? Nope. Well, I showed it to the brewery, Johnny, but there's nothing they can do. Right. Did you actually show it to the brewery, or did you just stand on the other side of that door for a few seconds? I showed it to the brewery. So that there's someone from the brewery stood the other side of that door, is they just standing there? Yes. Who's been stood there all day? Sometimes you don't notice people coming and going. Right. <laughs> What's his name? Mr. Pump Lager. <laughs> Mr. Pump Lager? Yeah. Can I talk to him? He, he's, uh, he's, he's very busy right now. Even so? Well, OK. Mr. Pump Lager. Yes? <laughs> oh, I um, thought perhaps you'd... I hadn't seen the, the petition. Sorry. What petition? Nothing. <laughs> it's no good, Johnny. I can't let myself walk all over me like this. You know, I've got to do something. Well, have you tried being a bit nicer to yourself? 
What do you mean? Well, when Janet wants me to do something, she gives me little treats. Like I do the washing up, I get a treat. Put the toilet seat down, I get a treat. <laughs> she calls it the carrot and stick method. You don't like carrots? No, but I'm very fond of sticks. <laughs> Well, it sounds like it's worth a try. Thanks, Johnny. Oh, don't thank me. Just give me a stick. <laughs> uh, I'll owe you the stick. Shame about the petition, Johnny. You haven't defeated me, Kelly. I'm going to mount a protest. Oh, yeah? What are you going to do? Make some pathetic banner? <laughs> no. What I have in mind is much more cunning. Ha! Johnny. I'll call this one Simon. <laughs> he looks like Simon, doesn't he? <laughs> What's going on? Bloody work and bloody gas. You know, everyone thinks because I'm a woman, I shouldn't have a proper job. No, shouldn't drive a transit van. Should sit at home shitting dimbles like you. <laughs> transit vans are quite big, aren't they? Not very feminine. Oh my God. <laughs> Not you two. What, is this a conspiracy? No. Is this National Dude on a Down Day? <laughs> no, it isn't National Dude on a Down Day. I just think you should know your limits and do Donna Down Day. <laughs> what? I want to say it too. <laughs> Look, some jobs are more suited to women, some jobs are more suited to men. It's a fact of life. <gasps> You're right. I need a big, strong man to open this for me. Where's Johnny? At the pub. Good. I want to be sure I don't bump into him on my way to find gas. <laughs> I thought you'd be on my side. You're not on anyone's side. Oh, well, fine then, Gandalf. Just sit at home with your goblin friends. He's not a goblin, he's an elf. Well, as long as you've got your elf, that's all that matters. <laughs> Donna! Donna! It's all right, Corinthian. Daddy will be OK. Don't be alarmed. They think they can ignore my petition and I'll, I'll run away defeated. Yeah, well, they're wrong. I'm not going to give up until I get justice. Corinthian, in years to come, you'll tell this story to your own children. Let's see them ignore this! <laughs> Yeah, it's Johnny's idea. He said that I should reward myself for every job I do. So, fix a car, have a wank. <laughs> fix another car, have another wank. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, actually. No, don't be preposterous. I wouldn't stroke that thing if it were made of puppies. Well, the methods worked so far. I've not had a break in three hours. How many cars have you fixed? None. I've been wanking. <laughs> well, I've got a job for you guys. This letter's from my birth mother. And I need you to open it. Yeah. You leave it to me, Louise. I won't rest until it's done. <laughs> it's Castrol GTX. Oh. <laughs> Helps me to masturbate. <laughs> We're here. We're queer. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight. I think eggs are really great. <laughs> oh, no, I've got it. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Johnny, get down. The customers are complaining about the noise. Then complain they must. Look, we can't have you hanging off the building like some anorexic King Kong. <laughs> then bow to my demands. I want baby changing facilities in those toilets. Johnny, do you even know what baby changing facilities look like? Don't blind me with science. Just bow to the demands. OK, well, seeing as you don't know what they look like, I'll see to it personally that your demands are met. Really? Well, I mean, well, yes, I should think so too. And do you know why? Because I refused to give up. I scaled this building and stayed till I conquered the beast. <laughs> and the beast, Kelly, was you. Could <laughs> 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 you? I'm just trying to do the best I can for my family. If that means working from home, then why not? Donna thinks I should be following this big, high-flying career, but, I mean, that's just not me. I'm happy with this job. 
I mean, that stuff about the elves being my best friends. <laughs> I mean, it's just rubbish. You know... Shit. <laughs> 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 Right, Louise. You ready for this? Yes, yes, go on. I'm ready. Okay. You want to sit down? Right. Um. <clears throat> Dear Louise, this is your mum speaking. Your real mum, not the mental one that you live with now. <laughs> Sorry for having you adopted, but the travelling circus is no life for a little baby. <laughs> Unless it's one of those babies that can do tricks. Which you can't. <laughs> and your dad's in prison for robbing a bank. Say hello to Gaz for me. Your mum. Gaz, this is an invoice for spark plugs. I thought you said you couldn't read. No, I said I couldn't open the envelope. Oh. You could neither, could you? It's like a sheet of rubber or something. Gaz, <laughs> you're pathetic. Yeah, you're right. I am pathetic. I'm the worst employee I've ever had. You know, I've done no work at all today, nothing. I've had 14 wanks. <laughs> Pretty sure I can smell alcohol on my breath. <laughs> well, that's it. I leave myself with little choice. I'm fired! <laughs> what? You heard. I demand I clear my desk and get the hell out of my sight. I'll be sending me my P45 in due course. Thank you. <laughs> do you not agree with sexual discrimination, do you? God, no. I'll shag anything. <laughs> God, it's beautiful. It's like Laboratoire Garnier in there. Johnny, it's an ironing board and a jar of talc. And I wouldn't have been there without my lone crusade for justice. And you know why? Because I had a dream. Like Martin Luther King and Westlife. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes people don't want to listen to your dreams. Well, then make them listen. People told me this couldn't be done, but I went out there and proved them wrong. Just think. Yesterday, there was one single solitary baby in this pub. Now, look, there's two. Oh, yeah. Give her a wipe from me, eh? <laughs> you know what? You're right. Now, if people tell me that I can't do something, I should just go ahead and do it. Damn right you should. And if people say that I can't drive a transit van, well, I should just sign one out and drive it. Whoa, whoa, what? The transit van? I'm not, not sure about that. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, don't thank me. Just give me a stick. <laughs> What do you want? I need to use your garage. Well, it's out of my hands. I've let myself go. Yeah, you are looking a bit jowly. <laughs> From me job. That makes no sense. Look, anyway, I need to use your garage to store my L's. I think I've become too emotionally attached to them. Oh, and that does make sense. <laughs> Simon, this is your Uncle Gaz. Say hello, Simon. Hello, Simon. Oh, no, you stop that. <laughs> <laughs> He's being silly. <laughs> Women can't drive. Easy this. Peace of piss. <laughs> I can't believe I've been sacked. Me. You're the boss. You sacked yourself. Yeah, well. Better tell Donna, Anna. Ah, ah. No taking phone calls at the wheel. Donna! Simon! <laughs> Who are them two bald bastards at our table? Well, you know, you're getting older when the pub seems like it's full of kids. Guys, 
What have I created? All I wanted to do was make the pub more suitable for bringing babies in, and who would have thought that had lead to... What, what, people bringing babies in? Fate is mocking me. You should have campaigned for something good. Like table football or a late licence or something. Or batting children. Let's scale the building again. Sorry, Johnny, you've got to get back to work. I thought you fired yourself. It was yesterday. This Donna smashed up half the cars on the street. I've rehired myself with a pay rise. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> well, don't leave me alone with these monsters. <laughs> Gaz! I need to find a new pub. I need to find a new career. What? I thought you were going to earn pound, pound, pounds. Yes, I did earn pound, pound, pounds, Johnny. Three pounds. <laughs> Let's be honest. Who's going to pay money for one of these ugly things? Any normal child would be terrified of it. It'd drive children away, if anything. I'll take it. <laughs> Come on, Brian. Me and you are going for a pint. <laughs> oh, Johnny, where's Corinthian? <laughs> All right. Shouldn't you be at work? No, guys, I should not, for I've been sacked. What for? I don't know, maybe something to do with me stealing a van and crashing it into some parked cars, but that's just a guess. Well, it did me a favour. If you're gonna go out and smash up some more cars, I could probably put you on a commission. Mm. <laughs> and they've already replaced me, you know, and given the promotion, both to bloody women. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? It's tokenism, that's what it is. Oh, well, there was a letter come for you from the factory this morning, did you see it? No. Hey! Maybe they've changed their minds. Maybe they're gonna take me back after all. Okay. Dear daughter, it is so hard to write this letter, knowing I will never see you again. I hope you can forgive me and know you'll have a better life with a loving family than I could ever offer you. Hi, right, Louise. Oh, God, Louise, you heard that. My own mother reaching out to me across the decades. I'm sorry. Fountain pen that reeks of cash. I'm rich! <laughs> and if you enjoyed that, then you can watch the next episode online now. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash BBC3. Next up tonight, though, it's The Real Hustle. <laughs> <laughs>